Now, the U.S. says its commanders are on alert for more attacks by ICE, including possible rockets or vehicle-borne bombs targeting the airport. The deadly attack at Hamid Karzai airport yesterday worsened the panic in Kabul. More than 100 people died, including 13 U.S. troops and 28 Taliban in the twin blasts. Claiming the responsibility, IS said one of its suicide bombers targeted translators and collaborators with the American army. U.S. President Joe Biden has asked the Pentagon to develop plans to strike back at the IS. Speaking at the White House, Biden held firm on the 31st August withdrawal deadline, adding that he bears responsibility for everything. Evacuation efforts have been accelerated hours after the blasts. A NATO diplomat said all foreign forces are aiming to airlift their citizens and embassy employees by August 30th. U.S. Central Command Chief General Frank McKenzie said there are about a thousand American citizens estimated to be still in Afghanistan. A U.S. Central Command spokesperson said 18 soldiers injured in the attack are in the process of being evacuated. Thursday was the deadliest day for the U.S. troops since 30 personnel died when a helicopter was shot down in 2011. Now for more on this, we are joined by Sartaj Aziz, former Foreign Minister of Pakistan. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Now, tell us, with such massive attacks now showing the presence and strength of ISIS in Afghanistan, sir, how concerned should Pakistan be considering there could be ISIS operatives coming in as refugees? There's no question that the latest, latest attack at the Kabul airport has further complicated a very grave and messy situation in Afghanistan. And obviously, uh, the ISS uh, Khorasan uh, is a matter of concern for Pakistan because uh, many of the CTP uh, disgruntled elements in Afghanistan joined the ISK Khorasan. And therefore, uh, that door is still open and Pakistan should be worried about it. But whether they will come as refugees, uh, the chances are now. Uh, slightly uh, better for us to control because we have erected a wall and that open entry that was in the 90s is not there. SATA has been integrated with the uh, uh, KP uh, Pakhtunkhwa province, uh, which uh, now uh, courts and administrative structure and uh, police stations are being extended right up to the Afghan border. And I think uh, uh, government has also uh, uh, sort of shown a clear line that we will not allow open refugees, but if some Mediterranean uh, do come in, they will be kept close to the border, preferably within Afghanistan, but our side of the border, and closely monitor so that they do not stick to the population. So right. this, uh, these are some of the safeguards. But the fact that uh, uh, IS uh, uh, is active in Afghanistan is a matter, and Pakistan will have to very carefully monitor the border and the situation. Right, so also the Taliban have held a strong position over an Islamic system in Afghanistan and that too an emirate. With that already taken care of, what could be the possible motive behind these attacks and who benefits the most from these disruptions? Well, I think the Taliban and IS, people and Islam and uh, uh, spreading Islam throughout the world are very different. The Taliban uh, want to uh, establish their own government within Afghanistan. They have no ambition to go outside of Afghan borders. Whereas IS is a global terrorist network which wants to spread Islam by force uh, throughout the country. So I think to that extent, uh, one can see why this is happening. But the more important question is who benefits most from this disruption. Now, obviously, there are very many others who are not happy at the Taliban takeover. Uh, many of the uh, previous government operatives and uh, forces. So who knows uh, who was behind these attacks also. Uh, uh, IS is always very anxious to take credit for whatever happened. But I mean, due course, we find out who is behind. But I think uh, this is a very sad situation uh, because Afghanistan has suffered a lot. It needs a stable government. Taliban have given the right signals to have an inclusive government and amnesty to everyone. So these disruptions are very unfortunate. 
Right, so also NATO has categorically stated that this incident won't lead to an extension of the withdrawal deadline. Now, President Joe Biden pledged to avenge the death of 13 American soldiers last night. Could this lead to an increase in Washington's pressure on Pakistan to partner or facilitate yeah. its over-the-horizon military operations? Not likely because Pakistan has given a very clear indication that we are not going to be Join any kinetic operation uh, in Afghanistan. And in any case, you know, uh, what we are looking for is stability in Afghanistan, and any such attack uh, will create instability and create uh, more chaos. So I think even America has to uh, think very carefully the kind of uh, uh, over the horizon military operation that they want to launch uh, will not be easy for them, uh, except unless they are very clear targets and very short term operations. But as far as Pakistan is concerned, uh, it has very clearly shown that we are not going to join any other war. We need peace and stability in Afghanistan, and therefore Pakistan is working to evolve a regional approach with other Asian countries like China, Russia, and Central Asian countries to uh, respond to this present situation and promote stability and peace in Afghanistan. Right. So lastly, the Taliban have not yet organized any proper government with the new month approaching. Salaries being due, banks still not operational completely, and with the international institutions and the US halting their financial support, could Afghanistan face a humanitarian crisis in the near future? Well, it's already facing the kind of uh, crisis because the prices are going up, and obviously it is very unfair on the part of Western countries to freeze Afghan assets. They belong to the people of Afghanistan and not to any government, whichever government it is, should have accept. And the people of Afghanistan, having suffered so much in the past, need humanitarian assistance, food and uh, other medicines and so many other necessities. So I think uh, this is an uh, unfortunate situation that instead of helping the people of Afghanistan, uh, they have uh, frozen their assets. Obviously, uh, conditions of human rights and uh, human rights, etc., are very, but there is plenty of time to enforce them and Many of their buyers, but uh, I think they should have access to their assets and their uh, funds, including the IFI, because uh, they, uh, and I think the sooner these are resumed, in the meanwhile, I think Pakistan, China, Russia would provide some minimum assistance, particularly food assistance, so that there is no uh, major uh, food shortages in the country. And Pakistan will also uh, hopefully promote uh, and uh, allow trade very easy access so that there is no shortage of goods. So in the meanwhile, I think uh, people of Afghanistan are suffering. And let's hope that more countries and institutions will come to their help. Well, let's hope the best for Afghanistan and may peace find its way to Afghanistan now. Sir Taj Aziz, former foreign minister, thank you very much for talking to Indus News.